Okay, hello. This is going to be chapter 14. Um, and this is for Chem 40B. So chapter 14, the title is called Delocalized Pi Bonds. Um, and I, uh, you've seen these uh, pi bonds or these double bonds in previous chapters, such as uh, chapter 12, as well as chapter 13, when you, uh, when you were talking about alkynes. But this time, we're going to look at how, how this is able to react and why delocalized pi bonds are so important. And this will be important for you um, in the next chapter, actually, chapter 15, which is um, benzenes and aromaticity. And what it's basically, um, this chapter is mainly to give you like an overview of what you're going to be seeing in the next chapter, OK? So <clears throat> let's take a look at, um, to understand delocalized pi bonds, we have to understand what goes on here and why this can happen, OK? So let's take a look at this. We have um, a an alkene here along with a chlorine with a methoxide uh, with a methanol that is going to react. And then this is going to be an SN1 reaction. So in an SN1 reaction, the leaving group in chlorine leaves. And when it leaves, uh, as you can see, I drew it here in a, um, in a Lewis notation. This C is with this C and has that double bond there. As it leaves, it forms a carbocation, right? And if you take a look at here, if this leaves, it forms a primary carbocation. And from what you know in 40A, as well as in 40B as well, primary carbocations are really bad because they're not stable, right? You usually want a tertiary or even a secondary might be better. But primary carbocations are not good. So why can this leaving group leave? Well, this leaving group can leave because there's resonance here with this double bond, right? It has extra electrons and it can donate to something, this carbon, which has um, a loss of electrons, right? And if it donates its electrons there, you see this double bond is now formed here along with this uh, carbon two with carbon three. Carbon one now gets the carbocation charge. And what this means is that as you know, resonance means um, there's many different ways that the electrons can be oriented in a molecule and resonance is showing that. So what resonance is showing is that this positive carbocation here, if it forms, it's going to be shared equally amongst this and this. And then now there's also going to be a pi bond that's also going to be shared between these three carbons, right? As you can see, this one has a pi bond shared with this, with carbon number two, but because of the resonance, carbon number two and carbon number three now have that pi bond as well. So that's why it's a uh, delocalized pi bonds because they're not just centered amongst one carbon molecule, they're local, uh, delocalized into many, which makes it more stable, right? And this is why you can do an SMN reaction. And there is actually a name for these types of systems if you have a carbocation and right next to it, um, one carbon next to it, you have a, uh, a double bond that can donate its electron density. It's actually called an allylic system. And these allylic systems, as you can see, uh, it forms a carb carbocation right here, right? As the leaving group leaves. And right next to it, there's a double bond, which means this is an allylic carbon. And because of that, because of its uh, double bond, it can uh, form stable carbocations because of resonance, right? And um, that's why we can do the SO1 reactions, okay? So as you can see, I labeled the, um, the double bond with a purple. And then as you can see, it's e evenly shared between carbon one and carbon three, which means that carbon one, two, and three have these pi bonds here, right? Um, you see how carbon two is sharing this pi bond with carbon number one, but also here, this carbon number three is also sharing it with carbon number one. That means that the pi bonds are everywhere. This positive charge is evenly distributed, which makes it very stable, right? And <clears throat> this is important to know because with these um, resonance structures, there's many different ways that a product can form, right? You can either, in this case, it doesn't really matter because there's a plane of symmetry right down the middle. But let's say we added an extra carbon, the, um, the methanol, right, our, our 
compound up top here can either attack it from here or here. So it does matter. And we're going to talk about that right now. Okay. So let's take a look at this reaction. We have a uh, an alkene with an alcohol reacted under acidic conditions and heat. So um, let's see what happens here. So first, um, the oxygen is a better nucleophile than the double bond, right? Remember how in the alkene and alkyne chapters, double bonds aren't really that reactive. So then this uh, oxygen is more reactive. So it's going to take the acidic hydrogen from the chlorine and then the uh, that leaves. So we form this. Oh, now it has two H's. And then we have the Cl, which is now a minus. If this O just gained that hydrogen, it has a positive charge now. And that means it's a good leaving group. So this can leave. Oops, I do that really bad. That bond leaves. So then now you have this positive charge right here on this carbon, right? And then now, let's take a look at what's, what's going on here. We have that carbon, but we also have, uh, this is a primary carbon, so it's a bad carbocation, but we do have a pi bond right here that we can donate its electrons to, right? So there is a resonance structure right here, structure right here. So if that goes, it's like that. And then now where's the positive charge going on to, okay? So this, this carbon, it still has that double bond, so it's still good. So that means this carbon that just lost the double bond has a positive charge. Remember in resonance structures, positive charges or negative charges can't just disappear. They always need to be there, right? So then, is that all the resonance structures I see? If we go back here again, that's this structure. So that's all the resonance that I see, right? So now we have these. And then now we have this chlorine that can react to either sites. So which one will it react to? It actually depends on what temperature and what situation it's in. So let's take a look at it reacting with this. Let's take a look at it reacting with both, okay? So if we react it with both, we have This is the chlorine that reacted with this one. And then this chlorine will be on this one, right? Boom, okay. So let's take a look at <clears throat> what is the difference between these two products, right? Because they come from the same molecule, but these two products are really, really different, okay? So let's first take a look at the chlorine, the carbon that's attached to the chlorine, okay? So the carbon that's attached to the chlorine right here is a primary carbon, right? It's only, it only has one more carbon attached to it. So this is a primary carbon. And then the carbon that's on here is attached to one, two, and three. So this is a tertiary carbon, okay? And then now let's take a look at the double bonds. This double bond is attached to one, two, three. So three uh, substituted. And then this double bond is only attached to one, right? So this is one substituted. So we have a few cases here. We have a case where in this case, our, um, our chlorine group is not as stable, but our alkene, our double bond is very stable, right? It's, a, it's, it's substituted by three methyl groups attached to it. And then in this case, we have a, a very stable chlorine, but we also have an unstable um, alkene, okay? So what, which one is going to happen first and which one will occur first? Sorry, there's a bit of lag, oh no. Ah. Okay, okay, there you go. So let's first take a look at the kinetic product. The kinetic product, forms under lower temperatures. It forms faster, therefore kinetic, right? The double bond is less stable. The attacking group in this case is a chlorine is more stable. So if we take a look at this, it says the double bond is less stable, but the attacking group is more stable. That would mean it's this, right? The double bond 
is uh, the double bond is less stable, right? Because it's a primary, but the attacking group in this case, the chlorine is more stable. So in this case, the kinetic product would be this, right? So that means that makes this the thermodynamic product, right? Thermodynamic, I'm sure you've heard that word thrown around everywhere. It's a, a product that forms under higher temperatures. And when I mean higher temperatures, I mean around like 60 degrees Celsius. Um, therefore, because it's, uh, it forms under high temperatures, it usually forms a lot slower. The double bond in this case is more stable and the attacking group is less stable. So it's flipped, right? So you're prioritizing the stability of the double bond instead of the stability of the attacking group. And if we take a look, um, which uh, double bond is more stable, this is more substituted, which makes this a better double bond than this. So that means this chlorine, this uh, product would be the more stable. Right? So if you wanna take a look at that, you see the kinetic product, it forms under lower temperatures and the double bond is less stable, right? If you compare this double bond to this double bond, uh, we know that in fact, this is surrounded by one carbon, two carbons and three carbons. But if we take a look at this, it's only surrounded by one carbon right here, right? So it's not as stable and the attacking group in the kinetic is more stable. So um, right here, it's surrounded by one, two, three. So it's a tertiary carbon, but in this case, it's only a primary carbon, okay? And kinetic products usually, um, they usually form around like negative 10 degrees Celsius or around that ballpark range, okay? So um, yeah. So now let's do a quick example of uh, HBr, um, this allylic system with HBr. So first of all, uh, there is a plane of symmetry here, right? This one down the middle. So it doesn't matter which um, double bond you choose to react it with. I'm going to go with, and the, the reason why we can, we can uh, react it with an alkene is that there's a very large delta positive on this hydrogen, right? Because bromine is very electronegative, okay? So I'm just going to react it. I'm just going to do this carbon up here. This one leaves. That means we can either get the hydrogen on this side, which would make this one a positive right here, right? Or we can either get it, oh, and then we should add the allylic system right here. Or um, we can also get it on this side. Um, the hydrogen on this side, and then the carbocation right here, right? <clears throat> okay. But this one, this system has resonance, while this system doesn't have resonance. So in that case, um, because of that, we're only going to react it with this, because if you take a look at this, this is a primary carbocation, which does not form. So we can disregard that. And then we can just focus on this because of there's there's resonance here with this double bond in an allylic system. We can put it there, and we can form something like this. And then the carbo carbocation will come over here, right? And then now, which one is our attacking group? The attacking group is the bromine, right? Bromine just left, so that makes it our attacking group. And then it can attack it here or here. Okay, so now let's draw those two products. Br here, um, this double bond is right here, or the Br is over here while that double bond is right there, okay? So which one is our uh, kinetic product? Which one forms faster under lower conditions and which one has the more stable attacking group. Well, let's see, let's compare. Let's compare this carbon to this carbon, right? This carbon is a one, two, so it's a secondary carbon, while this carbon is only a primary carbon, right? So that in that case, this one would be our kinetic product, right? And that makes this our thermodynamic product. But let's make sure 
thermodynamic product. Let's make sure a thermodynamic product forms slower at higher temperatures, right? So if it is at higher temperatures, then that means the double bond is going to be more stable. And in this case, this double bond here is surrounded by one carbon and then another carbon. So it's a secondary or two a dye substituted, whatever you want to say. But then this um, double bond right here is only attached to one carbon group. So that is mono substituted, right? So in that case, because of the stability of the leaving group, I mean, no, the stability of our attacking group here and versus here, that makes this one our kinetic product because our attacking group is more stable. It's secondary carbon versus a primary. And that makes this one our thermodynamic product because this alkene is di substituted and this one is mono substituted. Okay. So that's the importance of delocalized pi systems. You're able to form these uh, carbocations in an SN1 reaction because um, of how the pi bonds are evenly distributed everywhere. Okay. And this idea of um, pi bonds and um, stability of it being delocalized is important for uh, coming up. It's going to be benzene and aromaticity. Um, but yeah, so let me know if you have any questions. Um, good luck studying and have a good Thanksgiving.